Hi, my name is Falana, and we are at the 11th anniversary for Rise, and they just had the most amazing concert. I was so blessed to be here, be on stage, and I'm so grateful for everything that Rise means and has done in Toronto and in the community. Oh, we just had an amazing performance. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? And yeah, let's start there. Yeah. Um, I feel really amazing because Rise is a space where you come and you feel love automatically, and love is really powerful. Um, so to be able to go on stage and not have to worry about anything but love in the room. So my job as an artist is just to give love. Like obviously, I want people to feel good and I want to entertain people and stuff. But it just I feel always so overwhelmed with love and positivity whenever I come to Rise. And that's a gift. You don't get that everywhere. It's not every stage where you feel that energy before you even open your mouth. You know, so um, yeah, Rise is just, it's been consistent in that sense. So what's your connection to Rise? When did you first start going to Rise? <sighs> I think my first Rise was maybe like, oh, I don't even know, maybe like 2018. And it was very impromptu, like on a Monday night, which is not, you know, Monday night, Rise, you know, it's consistent, you come up, but um, it wasn't necessarily the biggest production, but it was, that love was there and it was consistent. And I remember being in that room and just having fun and just feeling connected to people that I didn't even know. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a blessing to even just come back and continue to share my gift. What message do you hope to convey through your music? What message do I hope to convey through my music? I think, I think through my music, I want people to feel empowered, lifted, feel positive, feel good about themselves. Um, I want people to just, to feel honest and authentic. You know, I want to pull those things out of people, you know, because I'm as an artist trying to do that my, the best way that I can. But also make people have fun and dance and do all of that fun stuff. But I think there's something so powerful when music can help people find who they are and be their truest self. So that's something that I hope my music can achieve or is achieving actively now. Beautiful. Thank you. And do you have a memorable moment in your career that you can share with us? <laughs> there's lots of moments. <laughs> Let me think of a good anecdote. Mm, oh, should I share this one? I'll share this moment because it was a lesson. And I think that um, lessons are very important. So I was at, uh, was it Rebel Toronto? I was opening for WizKid. And you know, I'm like, I come out with my weird cajon drum and I had like, my puff puff braids, my puff puff braids or whatever you want to call them at the time. And I remember I was like opening and I was, you know, nervous, but you know, it's normal to be nervous as an artist. And I remember there was one girl in front that was like booing me. <laughs> and this is gonna, like, this is gonna get better. I just, it, there's a lesson at the end of it. She was, she was booing me off stage and like, in the room was, obviously this is WizKid, Whiskey is like, I love Whiskey. So obviously the room was packed, right? So she was like booing me off stage. And I remember feeling really hurt that I cut my set short because I felt like I, her negativity made me feel smaller and made me feel less than. Obviously, she came, she's the front row. She came to see Whiskey. I respect that, sis. Do you? You know what I mean? Um, but one thing that I know, I cut my set a little bit short, and I was obviously like, you're playing and you're watching someone boo you, you feel kind of bad about yourself, whatever. But I came off stage, cut my set short, because I was, you know, feeling sad. And then I, I came off stage, and came as I was leaving, people were like, you were so good, you were so amazing, Why did, I wish I wanted more. You know, and it made me realize that I was so focused on one, like, naysayer, whatever her intentions were, or on one small thing when I, and I couldn't see the bigger picture. And I will never forget that day because that was a day where I was like, every single stage that I go on is a gift. So whether there's one person or a hundred million people, whether, you know, you know, they're booing me or whatever, like not that that's, I'm not manifesting that, but like every single stage is a gift. 
and you never know who's watching you. And don't focus on the negative when there's so much other stuff happening and there's so much good around. I didn't even see it. Yeah, the point is that I didn't see narrow. it because I was looking at her going like literally, wow. you know, because she wanted to see Wizkid. It's yeah. cool. I get it, sis. I, but like, so, you know what I mean? Like, and it's just like, imagine I stayed and did my whole set. Yeah. And people who were enjoying it, went, but they felt robbed. You just, yeah. you know, you... It's like you, both of you guys have narrow vision at that point. Yeah. Like hers is so wrong, and then yours is wrong in a sense where it's like you're only focusing on Yeah, one, on the one thing. There was a so whole room of people who were excited. Yeah. I will never make that mistake again. Like, in fact, I, I will serenade. If someone's, I'm like, yes, boo me, and I'm like, I'm going to sing to you. I'm going to, you know. Love your hair. We love your hairstyles, and we want to know what your hair routine. No, <laughs> if there is, to be yeah. honest. So as people probably notice, like I don't change my hair often. I think that's out of just not wanting to have to do too much work. Um, so yeah, I, if I'm really honest, like my hair routine is like braids, protective braids normally, get it steamed, washed, and then back in braids so that there is no routine. <laughs> Because that is a lot of work. And especially if you're like traveling a lot and having to like carry too many products, it's just, it's too much work. So I try and just, I've been like, I my hair is natural and I like that. I try and like protective styles. But I also like to play with my hair because I feel, you know, when I was growing up, I never felt like, not that I won't play with straight hair again, but I always felt kind of not, I didn't feel like myself with just like straight hair or like, even perming my hair and my hair fell out because my mom used perm that was too strong. You know, traumatic stuff. <laughs> I'm like playing with my hair and having fun with it and just, you know. So, but I, I yeah, I try to keep it healthy. Okay, so you were recently a part of the Twitter space uh, gender agenda. Mm -hmm. How was that experience and what does it mean to you to be a part of these serious conversations? Uh, so, when you are an artist, and as you grow, you have a platform. And it's very important that you, well, not everyone chooses to, but I think you, with the privilege of that platform, you have an opportunity to speak to things that people need to speak to hear about or to initiate conversations that need to be had. So um, I am very passionate about um, women's issues, specifically women's health, um, sexual health, reproductive health, um, and I try my best with the resources that I have to create opportunities for women to um, access that health, specifically in Nigeria and West Africa, um, and also spread information as it relates to that. So I've been fortunate to be around other like-minded individuals who are doing work in the space as well, and um, essentially talking about what we are doing, finding commonalities, um, aligning our resources and I think that in and of itself is really important because you know you can't you can use your platform for yourself and then you can also use your platform for others so I hope that as I continue to build my career that that will be something that I continue to do forever and ever amen so we watched your documentary Bolana life from my point of view okay how did it feel to open up and share so much about yourself so your fans can get to know you <laughs> Um, I, I'm really good at like in person, like seeing someone's face and having a conversation and being honest and authentic. I'm really bad at doing that on the internet. That's just not my skill. Some people know how to put a camera in front of themselves and bare their soul and post it. That to me is like, I just, I can't do it, but I want to do more of it. I'm trying to, because I know that sharing is really powerful and I understand the power of social media and stuff like that. But a documentary is another way to do that, where you're having a conversation and then you can translate it into something else. So, um, yeah, I think the more people know who I am as a person, the more they can appreciate and understand my art. So I'm really grateful for anyone who like watched it. And I'm gonna try and do better <laughs> and share more of myself, because I'm just, I don't know, social media is, it, it does different things to different people. You know, and I'm not ashamed of that part of me. So, do you feel a sense of responsibility to bridge the gap between Toronto and Lagos? You know, through your music or just through culture? Responsibility. Mm -hmm. Do 
do I feel the responsibility? Um, I don't feel like a weight or like a responsibility, but I think I, I'm, I'm living it, right? So me being physically here to have a conversation with you about Lagos, I'm already acting as a bridge, right? Or when I'm in Lagos and I'm talking about things about Toronto or Canada, I'm already acting as a bridge. I used to live in Havana, I'm acting as a bridge. And I don't feel like necessarily a responsibility, but I do know that I've had a very unique lived experience from people. I've lived in a lot of different places and my music has taken me there. So I have an opportunity through learning language and you know, traveling for music to be a bridge. Not so much a responsibility, but it just becomes my essence. So if I'm in a space, that's what I'm doing. And and I enjoy it too, you know. <laughs> Hi, my name is Palana from Lagos to Toronto to London, wherever I am in the world. So grateful to be here right now with you and I'm on the moment now.